doing, man? Oh, you know, I've been doing fine. I'm all right, I guess. Listen, I've been talking to a clown for six months. I think it's an excellent opportunity for us to make a movie. He's a Cirque du Soleil alum, worked with them, traveled the world for 20 years performing. And now he's washed up and retreated to the desert in Arizona. Well, he gave me his coordinates the last time we spoke and agreed to an interview if I met him out there. John, John Gilkey, that's his name. The exciting thing is that he's become sort of a recluse. He's living out there. I get the sense that his creative spirit has been broken. You know, he's blocked himself from being vulnerable and for an artist, even more so a clown. That's that. I gather that it wasn't always like that. But why do we stop ourselves from doing what we want to do? That's what I want to find out. You know, the obvious answer is money, right? You get a job, align yourself, conform. John made a clown school, but even that went up in flames. I think as a concept, clown authority is interesting. It's enough of a reason to make a movie, but I don't know if that's the movie I want to make. I feel that he might have just sold out, burnt out, washed up, gave up. I don't know. I want to talk with him because beyond the film, the destruction or the disappearance of his sensitive soul is at stake. Both of ours. He believes it's too late and I think it's now or never. I really do, man. I don't want to be chasing a rainbow my entire life, thinking that I might find the proverbial pot of gold, only to then turn 40 and realize that what I've been after is a mirage, and come back empty-handed, I, I'm compelled to know what happened, why he stopped performing, so it doesn't happen to me. I was lonely this morning, waiting for you. It's beautiful here. I mean, look at that. You were reading? Uh, a little bit. I think I made it three paragraphs, and then I just kind of sat and watched the mountain instead. Tibetan book of living and dying. I haven't got to the dying part yet. Everybody's still alive. All right. You read a lot? No, not so much. Not so much. I get headaches easily if I read. What interested you about that book? Well, it was given to me by Franco Drago, and he was a... Do you know who he is? Yeah, Cirque du Soleil yeah. director. Yeah. And um, I never read much of it. When he first gave it to me, I read a bunch but I certainly didn't finish it. And then I've been meditating a lot lately and I feel like I'm ready for like a new kind of step forward in my meditation. And I thought there might be some, some guidance in there. And sure enough, there's some pretty good guidance in there. Like what? I knew you were gonna ask that. Um, I, I, uh, can you ask me that again tomorrow and I'll read it again tonight and try to remember? Start over, John. I sit you down, put a camera in front of you, and I'm asking you straight questions because yeah. I want straight answers. Yeah. And you're just goofy. The questions, though, see, you're, 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 you're not quite in it right now. You're just dancing around the outside right now. And you, but you think it's me, but it's not me. I'm, I'm super here, super present. No, don't pretend it's you. You're pretending to be upset. That's not going to drive the film if you just walk away every time. That's a nice shot, actually. That's a nice shot. That's a really nice shot. 
and there's a car about to pass. You're gonna, you're gonna miss the action in the background. Okay. It's a pity. That was a good, that's a good shot. I, pr I promise you it's a good shot. It's a good shot, you're missing a good shot. Okay, maybe you're the problem and he's not the problem. That's a good shot and you're missing it. <sighs> I first saw a circus in, in 1987 when I was with the Pickle Family Circus. We were in Los Angeles, and uh, we went to see we went to see the Cirque du Soleil show, the first time they ever came to the States. And like everybody else, I I, was, I loved it. I was super into it. And I thought, oh, that's what I want to do. And I knew I wanted to be a character in the show. And at the time, I was juggling. I was a juggler in, in, in the Pickle Family Circus. I wasn't doing much else. I hadn't even started the acrobatics yet. So for the next nine years. Um, that's what I worked towards. I mean, everything I did was, was to building towards that, trying to, you know, acquire the skills I thought I might need that, that, that might be useful. Well, there's the juggling, which I yeah, had. Then I was learning, you know, acrobatics, like Chinese acrobatics. I was learning more movement skills, acting, character, physical comedy, and yeah, let's say clown, whatever that is. Just, you know, tried to say yes to every opportunity. Went to Switzerland and was in a theater company there. Well, I was pretty consistently on the road from 87 to 2004 or five. I mean, it wasn't like nonstop, but I was you know, more time on the road for sure than not on the road. And then I started to kind of settle down a little bit around 2005. So I started directing in 2003. The first gig was very good. After that, my directing gigs became less and less um, uh, impressive. That's not quite the right word. Anyway, eventually I realized I couldn't, I couldn't, I can't direct. I don't know how to direct because I, I just went from like the super primo gig to, um, you know, nothing. So that work dried up. I didn't get offers to go travel and direct shows. And I was teaching, yeah, I started teaching after I got let go from Cirque um, for the first of what would be two times. Uh, I decided, well, I'll teach uh, if I can. Did you get comfortable enough to the point where after they kicked you out, you could maybe try some other things instead of keeping up with this pursuit of trying to be the best clown you could? That might be why I'm here in the desert. The thing that we play with in Clown is that, th that the actor can get lost, can get carried away in the character and get into, tr into trouble through that. And then there's game in that. But it seems to me that because the Clown is so often the writer, performer, and even self-director, there's, there's a personal aspect to it. That, um, that, again, when it's well done, sort of exalts clown into like this special, beautiful, magical place. Whereas if I'm interpreting somebody else's story and I'm being directed by somebody who has their version of the story, to what degree is my expression in there? Is, it, is my expression in there as fully as somebody who has control over all those things? I'd say probably not. Can you discern in your own life what's performance and what is it? I suspect that I'm bullshitting more than I want to be. But I'm not sure how not to bullshit.
I'm, I'm here. Oh, what do I want out of it? Oh, I think it's neat you're making a movie. And I, you know, it'd be if I could, well, this is thing, this is interesting. I guess I'm gonna be in this, um, this movie. Um, so assuming I'm, I'm in it and I make the final cut, my first thought was, oh, if I could watch this thing without just hurling, you know, if I could watch it and not feel so ashamed, that'd be pretty cool. We were talking about watching myself, ourself, oneself, on video. And I said, if I make, if, I, if, if, if I'm valuing, if I'm judging the performance or the rehearsal on the video, then I'm, what I'm really judging is my pleasure of the thing, of me. That means it's for, and if I only accept the things that I like, then what if other people don't like it? That's not the point. So what I was gonna say here was, I wanna, you asked me what I want out of this. Well, it'd be nice if I could wa actually watch this thing without feeling sick to my stomach, but that actually might be wrong. That might be misguided. Maybe I should, maybe I should be ashamed to watch this thing. Maybe that would mean I did a good job. So I come to you and I tell you, hey John, I wanna make a documentary about a clown, about John Gilkey. Yeah, but I'm not sure I'm a clown, but okay. Is that, is that where we have, the, is that the rub right there? Maybe that's the rub. You want to do a documentary about a clown. I'm not so sure I'm a clown. You're trying to put me, here's the thing. You're trying to put me in a corner. You're trying to put pressure on me. You got, you, you're the one who's got to dig deeper. You got to dig deeper, not me. Read. Read and don't deviate from the reading. Not read the... January 26th. Oh, the doc guys came last night. That's you guys. Yeah, read it. That was fun. Read it. Uh, it does feel like all these cacti are being held up at gunpoint. Because <laughs> all the cactuses are like that. It does feel like that. So stuck. Time to change or disappear. Interesting. Here we are disappearing. Major adjustments needed. Looking for a vision. Spending too much time alone is an attempt at controlling the future. Ah, because then your, your mind starts to. Oh. I think a lot of what you said was bullshit. You know you're a washed up clown, <laughs> but you don't accept that reality. <laughs> I don't think it's funny, man. You, you've, got, you've got a predetermined idea of what you want, which means that you're missing so much of what's coming your way, what's happening between us. You want me to be, to be vulnerable, and you think that that's going to be me spilling my guts and, um, and crying or whatever. You're, 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 you're viewing this relationship based on, on a spectrum of um, lies to truth or or uh, um, vulnerability to, um, uh, you know, protected. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at it as um, seriousness and play. Here's the spectrum. Play equals vulnerability, if it's pure play. But it's hard, you know, we, we don't live in a, we don't live in a, society and a culture that really invites play. Um, I, let's see, I accept, I accept that I am uh, fearful to a degree of being vulnerable. Yes, 
is that the primary driver of my actions? I don't know. I'm not so sure. I'm not as sure as you are about that. I'm afraid you're looking for, for this, this, again, this sort of epiphany or, or for me to reveal something, you know, for, for us to find an answer for, for this one thing that's holding me back. And once we find that answer, I'm going to go perform again and everybody's so happy. It's not like that. That's not going to happen. It's just not the situation. It's much more complex than that. What is the situation? I just told you. I, I laid it out pretty good. I laid it out really good. I gave it all there. The whole context is what I'm talking about. So if you want to produce some kind of a show, if you want to produce some kind of a show and you want to get a bunch of people together and you're going to pay everybody and you, you book a book a theater and I mean, I've never seen you direct something live, so I don't know if you're any good. I don't know if I'd fully trust you. We'd have to build that trust. Uh, would I jump in? I might jump into it. Yeah, if the timing was right and everything. Sure. And then you'd get your wish. I would be performing again. So it's not that. It's not, it's not, it's not out of the question. It's just the situation hasn't arisen. It's not as dramatic as what you want, but that's the truth. I'm afraid.